Hi and welcome back to my channel. It's Alexandra here and today I am so excited to show you how I'm going to be setting up my fifth bullet journal. Um, and so before we dive in, I just want to give you a brief um, little explanation of this particular journal. This was um, the limited edition Lecture 1917 journal that was released last August and part of the fifth anniversary edition that writer, writer Carol did. Um, along with a bullet journal um, artist by the name of Frederica. Um, and she was the one who designed this beautiful orchid um, cover in this like with this um, like rose gold detailing. Um, and it is an official bullet journal. It even has like a little, like the, it was a limited edition. So only 999 were made. So I have number 658. Um, so it already has like the key. I'm just gonna like fill this in and stuff. Um, I guess a little explanation of the designer Federica, um, who is an amazing artist. Um, so real quick, um, as far as collections, I talked a little bit about um, in my fourth bullet journal flip through a couple of collection pages that I was going to be getting rid of and some new ones that I was going to be adding. So before I start drawing in stuff here, this is index and stuff. It already has two pages um, set aside for the future log. So this is going to be for my future log for the next uh, year. Um, I'm going to do my mastery grocery list along with the shopping list. I'm going to do a weekly meal plan and my recipe log. Um, then I'm going to do my recipes to try. And then something that was inspired by Amanda Rachel Lee is I'm going to do a grid spacing um, page just for reference so I know how many dots are for halfway through the page, a third of the page, so on and so forth. When I create spreads my cleaning and a uh, schedule and my self care menu that I'm going to carry over from my last bullet journal. And then I'm going to do something called monthly themes. Um, or basically I will have like, like a box, let's say designated for each month where I can kind of just brainstorm, um, theme ideas and, um, color combinations in preparation for, um, the months and the themes that I want to do in my bullet journal. And then last but not least, I'm going to do a reading log, keeping track of all the books that I'm reading throughout the year. A couple of things that I have not included in this bullet journal that I've done in most of them are, I'm not going to do the future 10 life and goals. I'm not going to be doing um, a, a, a tracker, tracking numbers on Instagram or YouTube um, subscribers or things like that. Um, I'm also not going to be putting in like my weight tracker or um, a brain dump or a goal setting page. I, you know, I usually do that on a month to month basis. So I'm not going to be doing that as far as the collection pages in the beginning of the journal. So let's get started. Um, as far as um, the theme, I'm going to be, like I said, I'm going to be carrying over the orchid theme. Um, throughout the collection pages using very pale, you know, pastels. Um, the colors that I'm going to be using are very pale pink in 800, a purple like lavender in 673, um, the yellow in 991, and then for like the stems and stuff or the branches, we're going to be doing this, um, latte like taupe color in 992. so um i'm also going to be using to draw big for faber castell pe artist pens in the f size and in the xs size so let's get started and enjoy so first up we have the future log and because this is an official bullet journal uh, the future log is already labeled for you over the course of four pages. So here you'll see me set up the first six months, and then in the next vignette, you'll see me set up the next six months. 
Um, they're both going to be look the same. Uh, and you'll see here that I use the technique of drawing out the orchids. Now, the secret to doing this is kind of imagining that the orchid is a star shape. And you take, or I took, my favorite Castell Pit Artist pen in the F size, and you use that thicker pen to outline the orchid in, in, in the various shapes. Then I take my Tombow dual brush pen in the darker of the pink and I use that to shade in the center portion of the or the inner portion of the petals. Then I take the lighter pink in the 800 and I use that to shade the outer portion of the petal and outline the petal and I use then the yellow color to color in the center of the flower. Now what makes the world of difference with these orchids is taking the finer tip Faber-Castell pen in the XS size and adding those thin lines for the details of the petals. And this makes the world of difference in making the flowers look really realistic and you look like you're a pro when you might not be. I know I'm not. So this was um very satisfying to look at when it was all said and done because I was really, truly proud of myself that I, I um, drew nice orchids. And as you can see over this 25 minute long video, and I apologize that it's that long, but it was over two hours of actual footage. Um, I kept practicing throughout all the collection pages. You'll see me added an orchid here or there. And uh, it really, really came together very nicely, I thought. And I wanted to carry what was going on in the cover of the bullet journal into my collection pages uh, for this brand new journal. I also alternate the three colors, the darker pink, the lighter pink, and the yellow for the headers for the future log. And then I write out all the months. You, you will notice, however, that I did mess up when it came to March and April for 2020 next year, but it was nothing that a little white out um, couldn't fix. So sit back and enjoy me planning out the rest of my future log.
So next up in my bullet journal is my absolute must have collection page that I've had in every bullet journal and I'm definitely putting in this one is, and it's my master grocery list. Um, it is a little tedious to list every item that you might go grocery shopping for, but it is so worth it to me. So basically how this works, and I've gotten a lot of questions about this um, over the past couple of years, is basically a master grocery list is when you have a complete list of things that you would probably most likely buy um, on your weekly food shopping trip. And so you reference the list and you make your grocery list for that week. Obviously, you're not going to buy everything on your master grocery list, but it's there so that, you know, if you're, you, if you're forgetful of something that you might need, whether it's a fruit or a vegetable or something for your kids or whatever it is, um, you have your master grocery list to re reference back to, and it helps you create your weekly shopping list. Um, and again, you can customize this to your needs. Obviously, I have two small children, so I have a little section for, you know, my kids. Um, if you don't, then that's fine. If you're a vegetarian, you don't need the um, meat or poultry section, okay? You can customize this however you want. I found this master grocery list off of Pinterest a couple years ago, um, but it's proven to be so beneficial to me in planning out my weekly grocery lists, um, and it hasn't failed me yet. So again, in a lot of these collection pages, you'll see that a lot of them are food-based because now that I'm a stay-at-home mom, um, the vast majority of my responsibility is making sure everybody's fed. <laughs> So next up is the third and final page of my master grocery list, um, including a section for cleaning products, um, toiletries, condiments, drinks, and all of that. And then on the opposite side, on the right-hand side, is where I keep my shopping list, usually in the form of a post-it note, but I do leave a designated space to just put that in there. I apologize that I didn't film the shopping list. It's just me actually just writing the header and the faux calligraphy so it's not like we're missing much but i don't know why i don't have the footage um but yeah then but again very tried and true spread and a must in my bullet journal So this is a new spread that I am introducing into my bullet journal, and that is a weekly meal plan page using post-it notes that I've cut in half. And I did something, I can't say this is the first time, but in my very first bullet journal, I did do a, a, a spread where I did weekly meal plan with very small post-it notes. But what I did here is I kind of like kicked it up a notch and I used slightly larger post-it notes so that way I can also list the ingredients of each meal that I use so that when I do my shopping list and I want to make a particular meal that week, I have all the ingredients of what that meal needs to include. So if I'm making, let's say, you know, roasted chicken, I also know all the other ingredients that I would need if I don't have it already of what I would need when I go to um, the supermarket. So this is kind of me kicking it up a notch. And then on the right hand side, I'm going to have all of the go-to meals that we make throughout the week. So I could swap them in and out for the different days of the week. So I'm really hoping that this works out. Um, I, as you can see there, I have three recipes that I normally make. I have to, um, write up the post-it notes for the rest of the go-to meals that we eat pretty often. But, um, I really am excited to use this and I know that it's really going to help me be more prepared when it comes to food prep. So here we have my recipe log and this is basically a log and you see I have my old bullet journal up on the top there as I'm migrating all of these collection pages. But basically a recipe log is basically all the recipes that you make 
on a pre- pretty frequent basis. And so I divided them into different categories, breakfast pasta, salads and sides, meat, poultry, and seafood. And then I make a master list of all the recipes that I've made or I've cooked. So that if I am stumped for ideas, I have my log to go back to and I can get inspiration if I want to, if I feel like changing things up a little bit uh, so that you don't get stuck in a rut eating the same things over and over again. So it's always been very helpful to me and I am definitely, I'm migrating it into my new bullet journal. And because it seems like all of my collection pages are food oriented, um, the last of these food related collection pages deals with recipes that I want to try. This is also another collection page that I am migrating from my old bowl journal to my new one. Um, so I'm, and I have tried some of the recipes that were in my old one. So now I'm just migrating the ones that I still want to try. And I keep adding to this list as time goes on. And then you'll see on the opposite side, and this was something that was totally inspired by Amanda Rach Lee, um, is a grid spacing guide so that when I do my spreads, I have a reference so I know how many dots to count for, you know, if I want something halfway through the page, a third of the page, a quarter of the page, and so on. So I know that this is going to be very helpful to me. So the migration continues as I am now putting in my new bullet journal a cleaning schedule to keep me on track with what I should be doing on a weekly, a monthly, a yearly basis and so on. And a self-care menu, which I truly love and I'm so happy I put it in my last bullet journal that I had to include it in this one. And it's just something like a little reminder if you're feeling stressed, if you're a mom and have kids or you're stressed out with work or whatever the case may be, it's just a nice page to have um, that include like little pick-me-ups, things that you can do for yourself that encourage self-care and that help you just recharge and feel good about yourself. I've included 16 things here on this particular list, but you can obviously change it depending on your hobbies or what makes you happy. Uh, but it was something that was really helpful for me and so I had to include it in this bullet journal.
And as we are nearing the end of my bullet journal setup here, the second to last of these spreads deals with a space where I can brainstorm on monthly themes and color combinations. I kept this page super minimal because and I didn't want to include um, the orchids or anything because I really wanted it to be a place where I could see the colors um, that I plan on using in future months for different themes. So I really wanted to just keep it simple, a uh, place where I could like doodle and work on color combinations. So last but not least is a reading log. And this is just a very simple minimal log that I did that will note when I started and ended a book and the title and the author, of course, just so I can see for myself how many books I can read within a year or six months or however long this bullet journal lasts. But I had this in my last bullet journal and I definitely wanted to migrate it over into my new one. So here is the flip through of my fifth bullet journal. Here's my key and I apologize that I didn't film this. Thank you for watching this. I hope that if you were in the process of starting your own bullet journal that these collection pages provide inspiration. Um, all of the supplies that I used are linked down below in the description box. If you have any feedback, thoughts, or questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Please make sure you like this video and give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed already, please do so, so you can follow along um, with my June plan with me or look at past videos. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you again for watching. Bye.